Cause you guys, I'm about to talk to my in-laws today before my surgery, so they can pray for me. Hello. Hello, Anna. How far, Big Sis? I'm good. I'm good. Chilling. Actually, I lost six hours. Not yet. Not yet. We're still at home. We should be going to the hospital tomorrow. Okay, we'll tomorrow see morning. Keep it You see a video for where? Everything will work out for me. No, YouTube. YouTube. Um, oh, the one for the fibroid, the COVID. Um. Oh, grandma is there. Mama. <coughs> Mama, good morning. Oh we are fine by the grace. We are fine by the grace of God. And how are you? Amen. No matter how the devil fight. Amen. Ole, ole, boss. Who, Saboy? Say I'm in that and I'm afraid. She said, put your hands in your stomach. Hmm. All right. Saboy, this surgery you are going. The Spirit of God will go with you. Amen. Amen. They will enter before you. Amen. The doctor will be physical. When the angels of God will do it. Amen. And you will, you will survive and come out. Amen. After this, there will, there will not be surgery in your life anymore. Amen. Amen. The angels of God will use you the angels to clean up whatever that is hindering you from conception. After this, you will carry your babies. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Keep faith in the Lord. With Him, all these are possible. He's our director. He's our controller. And through Him, all these are well. And He said, oh, we're well with you. Amen. Go in peace and come back in peace. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It may, it may you now. You don't go say your own prayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, we commit your daughter Savoya unto your able hands, Lord. I shall be going into that theater tomorrow, Lord, for the surgery. Lord, you will perfect everything that concerns her life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever it is that is causing impediment, causing hindrances, causing her discomfort in her body, Lord, as you can use those doctors to remove them all, everything shall be success in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, King of glory, after this surgery, Lord, Good news Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, King of glory, after this surgery, you will fulfill the desires of your daughter, O oh Lord. You will grant her every wish, O oh Lord, every desire of her heart, you will grant unto her in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. And the children of God said, Amen. Thank you amen. so much. Today is September 28th, and uh, September 28th, 2020, and today I am having my fibroid surgery. For those of you who don't know what fibroids are, they are non-cancerous growths that grows around and in your uterus lining. Um, for some women, they cause heavy bleeding, heavy painful cramps, and infertility. And in my case, um, I have really heavy bleeding, like heavy heavy bleeding to where I have to change my tampons and pads every 20 minutes y'all and, that, and that's bad um, another reason why I wanted to get them removed because my husband and I have been trying to conceive for like the last two and a half three years and for some reason it just hasn't happened and um, although my doctor did say that it may not be a reason because people get pregnant with fibroids all the time I just wanted to go ahead and get those taken out 
um, so it can increase my chances of you know for conception so that's another reason why I want to just go ahead and get them taken out yeah so we're headed to the doctor now and I'll keep you guys posted pray for me okay All right. Oh, you, you can come back here. Oh, you can come yeah. back here. Okay. You don't have an infant's year or anything, so. Okay. Good. All right. It's going to be your hangout room. That's how we do it. Okay. Where are you having tonight? Five-board removal. Okay. Did you take the two fancy showers? Yes, I did. <laughs> so you're going to use these wipes. Mm -hmm. There's two of them in there. Mm -hmm. You're going to scrub really well on your tummy and the top of your legs. Don't go in the vagina. Okay. It'll burn. Okay. Um, and then throw them away. You'll scrub for 30 seconds for each wipe. Okay. Okay. And then your socks and your gown will open to the back. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So let me give you, make sure your name is spelled correctly and your date of birth is good. You can come in and sit down. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Thank and you. you can use this restroom right here. Just lock both the doors and then unlock both the doors. Okay, awesome. And I'll come back. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I was pretty fast, right? They were waiting for me. See, this is nothing compared to when I was getting my uh, BBL done. You see how as soon as you get here, they walk you straight back and get you ready for your surgery, like immediately. Okay, you guys. I have to get undressed and get into my surgery uh, clothes. So I'm gonna catch you guys back in just a second. Okay, y'all. Okay, just made it out of surgery. I gotta eat something, I'm starving. And I'm freezing. Mm. They brought me lunch, I, I'm so hungry, you guys. Here's a cheeseburger. Is that bacon on there? just right now although I'm really hungry because I kind of still feel like I'm gonna throw up a little bit okay yeah. depending on your follow-up is uh, um, or he might have us take it off tomorrow so we'll, we'll figure it out before you go home okay, okay. I'm gonna lower your knees a little bit when you're ready, you're going to kind of feel like you're probably stuck in a hole. We'll just have you move your legs towards me and just get your feet flat on the floor. And we'll just sit for a minute. You can use my arms, you can use this room, whatever you need to kind of get yourself up. Breathing through your knees. Go ahead. Let's see if it's just like I would feel fun in my cup. At least they had like a little dent. Oh. Okay. I'm just going to put a clean hat on your bed when you get up. Okay. I got to get up and walk, y'all. Practice. Like the sooner I start walking, the better I feel. Oh, did I mess it up? No, not at all. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Just gonna put a fresh one on before you get back. Okay. 
So you're taking a walk where? Downstairs or? Just, I don't have to be far. Just, just, I just need to walk a little. You want to go a little longer? You can walk around your room, whatever you want. I can, I can walk around in here. I don't have to be. Let's find out. Okay. Ready? Okay. You probably want to kind of walk with a little hunch. That's normal. Mm -hmm. So you don't stretch too much. You're not going to hold it. Can you hold it? Yeah, so you don't. I'm gonna say something to your fan. Y'all already know what it is. <laughs> I just wanna walk so I feel better because I've been laying in the bed all day. And then I feel like I'm smashing my butt. Let me see. Did I smash it? What you think, honey? Do it look smashed? Oh, it should have smashed. Don't play. Do it look smashed? Yes, it does. He doesn't, babe. You, 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 you keep giving tripping. Oh, did I put that in the camera? Yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, you guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, today is Monday post-op and my throat is sore the guy warned me I think they had to stick a breathing tube or something down my throat but um, <clears throat> y'all just want you guys to know the surgery was successful um, <clears throat> y'all y'all know I had the fibroid removal done and I was told that there were only like maybe three or four, but turns out there were nine fibroids, you guys. Nine fibroids that the doctor had to take out. And <clears throat> maybe that was the reason why I was bleeding. My periods were so heavy. I'm not sure, but y'all, I pulled through. I had to get up and put some makeup on. Y'all know how I am about my makeup. So I feel a little better. Actually, I'm moving around pretty good, you know, for somebody that just had my stomach cut open. You know, I put back on my Faha because it also will probably help with this whole thing I have going on. But anyway, I'm getting ready to be discharged here in another couple of hours. <clears throat> Honey, uh -huh. Dr. Patel just left. He said that um, my tubes. He couldn't get Dada to go through either one of them. And he said it could be the way the uterus was sitting. And after one month, he wanted us to have another HSG test where they could do that um, die thing again to see if one of the tubes are open. He said it's possible that um, from, you know, taking out the fibroids could have caused some sort of... Um, the, the way the fluid runs through the tubes, he says, so we need to let it heal first. I'm so disappointed because it's like all this time we've been trying, what if both my tubes were closed? You know what I mean? No, because one was open, remember, and we did the HSG test. So he said, don't give up. He said, he said, just stay positive for now, and after one month, we're going to do an HSG test to see, he said, because it could have been the way the uterus was sitting and positioned, because we had the uterus up and out of your room. Um, I'm just disappointed, because I'm like, if it's not open, then we're going to have to do IVF. I just... I just can't believe it. It's okay, man. It's not okay. It's, it's your history. It's open. Huh? It's open. It was open. It is open, too. Well, we're going to, after one month, we're going to have another test to check and see. How much is the test? The insurance will cover it. 
Okay, don't worry about that. It's open, I know that for sure. So he said you're good to go? Yeah. See that? These are my, see the results? The fibroids, they're just a small, see? Are you seeing those? Uh -huh. There's nine, nine little fibroids right there. They went, they went, they went from big, small, 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 small like that. Yeah, they were little. I'm just, uh, all this time, I haven't gotten pregnant. He said, no, don't say that. He said, because it's possible that they're open. You just, I have, we have to do a different type of test. He said, the way you I tried it in the, he said, I tried for about 20 minutes. He said, um, but the way your uterus was positioning, sometimes it happens. So, oh, Kingsley. All, all that money we spent. What money? On the tubal reversal. So are you saying the tubal reversal wasn't properly done? Is that what you're trying to say? Not saying that's not properly done because your tubes can can, can get um, what they call it the extra skin that prevents flow. I don't know. Let me just think positive because they were open a few, three. What? Well, so we're going to have another dye test again in one month and then or either we can save up for the IVF and just get it over with. No, I'm really done with the IVF. Baby. $1,000? We could do it. At least they can put three or four eggs in there at one time and be done with it. I'm really done with the IVF. Let's just hope you're just here for us and run the test. Okay, this hypothetically speaking, I mean, what if? Uh, well, uh, well, okay, what about you put on the test and it was just because of the way your uterus was sitting? Okay, but what if they're not open? Then what? That's the way it should be done. The way I believe it is. I don't want to believe otherwise. I'm sorry. I don't want to go hypothetical. Okay. I'm sorry, babe. Don't let that break you. No, I seriously don't have already discharge. I'm gonna just do a couple of sit ups, bring some, bring some of this plate I got here. Well, he said and a couple of hours, yeah. so maybe. It's okay, we don't even let that stress you at all. Alright, well, I'll talk to you later. That's just the whole month from now, we're gonna run the test, like you said. And when we run the test, you're gonna come back like all oh, your tubes are open. But you're gonna smile again, so. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Uh, I want you to already to let me go. I don't know, I'm just kind of upset right now. This one, you know, so now that you feel so now, so now that you feel a little down because of the news you heard, you think this is the proper time to let me go? No, I, I was just. I think it should, it should, it should be the right time for me to cheer you up. All you want to do is let me go. I'm just thinking about all that I went through and. It's okay, man. First of all, you have to look at this this way. Okay. I know we spent all this money on super Vasa and everything just to get pregnant and all of that. But the money we spent right now wasn't just about a baby. It was also about your health and all of that. Just like you told me about Keisha, your cousin and all of that. And let's just deposit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't just about the baby. So right now, let's just hope that by the time you do the, what you call, what you call the test that you want to do in a month, everything's going to be fine. Well, tell me there's a lack of trust in the system. Um, okay. And if it comes to the world this time, we might have to go have a have a what? What natural? Yeah, all with natural remedies to everything. It's open on my tools. Yeah. All with natural remedies to everything. Believe me. 
To walk on the back of the club with two men. I don't know. So the trip is open. I don't tell them really what it took because I have, I have, I have, I have, so I have this strong feeling that your troops are really open. Like I feel like you know because of the whatever surgery you got going on and you've been dilated and all of that from whatever you got going on. Maybe that's why. Maybe the uterus. You know, remember when the doctor told us the uterus sometimes swings around in any kind of way you want to swing around. Yeah, but the dye was spilled. Like when you put the dye in there, it spills out with the tubes. And um, I just kind of want to share my experience with the whole tubal reversal thing. Not tubal reversal, I'm sorry, which I'll get into that in a minute. But the fibroid removal. Um, I had no idea I had that many. I was um, initially there were four or five. Or maybe I think three or four that he could visually see but once he got inside there were more as you can see in the video that there were a lot of little bitty fibroids but I am so glad we were able to um, get rid of get, get, get those out because now since they've been removed my cycle is back normal um, I scheduled my surgery like the week after my cycle I mean the week the last day of my cycle so I can heal up and then see how my how my next cycle will be but it came a little bit early which i think about two weeks early which was which was good and that's how i was able to tell that my cycle has gone back to normal since my fibroid removal my bleeding is not as heavy as it was and i can now go at least two and a half hours two to three hours without changing my tampon which i am so grateful for y'all thanks to doc i really appreciate him but in any way y'all I had my procedure done at Baylor Scott and White um, out in Fort Worth and the reason why I chose to go to Fort Worth even though it was an hour away is because their prices are much more reasonable and it's just the, the staff and the facility I mean everything was so nice y'all if I tell y'all the ladies there at that facility were so nice to me like I got like the best service that I've ever I'm, I've never experienced being treated so nice before I mean um, the nurse's name were Emily I think her name one of name was Emily and one name was Helen, if I'm not mistaken. But at any rate, y'all, they work in the department that take care. I think it's they work with the female reproductive system. That's where they, they are. And it's just that they were so nice to me. If I tell you while I was in the room, they came in like every hour and a half to two hours to check on me to see if I wanted anything, to see if I was hungry. You know, I had a catheter in, so they had to, I was I had been drinking a lot of water because the medication they had given me was making me so um, thirsty. I kept drinking a lot of water, so they had to come and check on me a lot to make sure they were dumping out my, my catheter bag. It's just that the lady, the service there, y'all, was just so great. I mean, I would recommend that place to anybody. Uh, it's just, they were so sweet to me. But at any rate, um, as you can see that I had to get up and walk, y'all, because that was my first time sitting after my BBL procedure. And yeah, that was my first time sitting after my BPL procedure. And I was kind of worried about if I was smashing my butt or not. So now I'm sitting down more comfortably now. But at any rate, um, I just wanted to share you share with y'all my experience. And I, I was, as you can see in the video, I was so upset simply because, you know, one, during surgery, the doctor went in to test my tubes where they did like a, it's, it's not an SHG test. I don't know what it's called when they're in there with in surgery. So they have to check and make sure your organ or whatever it is, is working properly, your uterus. So he did a test and then, you know, right before I was getting ready to be um, discharged, he told me that my tubes didn't appear to be open and I, it broke my heart. I was like, oh my gosh. Now, my husband and I spent a lot of money on a tubal reversal. Now, if you guys live in Texas, you know that anything that deals with um, fertility or reversals of tubes, insurance don't cover it. So we had to spend that money out of pocket only to realize or, or to discover that my tubes were, were closed back up. But thankfully, they were closed due to scar tissue because sometimes after a procedure, you know, they were because three months after the I think it was like four months after I had my tuber reversal, we hadn't got pregnant because the fertility specialist told me once you had so once you have the reversal done, give it two months and then try to conceive again. So we waited after two months after that third after 
the fifth month, I realized, okay, we haven't gotten pregnant after going through, you know, taking those fertility enhancement pills to make sure I produce a lot of eggs to get pregnant. I had an IUI done and I hadn't got pregnant. So I was like, what's going on? So I ended up going to get an HSG test then to make sure where they stick this fluid or whatever they stick up in your uterus and then to see if the fluid spills out through your tubes. So I went and had that test done and one of my tubes were, were occluded, meaning one was blocked and then one of them was open. So I'm assuming because it was under the six month time frame, they were they framed, they were still open, one was still open, but then it may have closed right immediately after that or sometime after that. And that's probably why I haven't conceived since. And it's just Y'all, it's been very, very depressing because we spent a lot of money on that procedure only for me not to get pregnant. Not in, in addition to getting IUIs done thinking my tubes were open. You know how much IUIs, they're not, they're not that cheap either. You know, so and I've had two of those. So it's like, oh my gosh, you know, what if all this time we've been trying to conceive and taking those fertility uh, hormones and all that old mess and then my tubes are closed. So it was all for nothing. That's what I'm thinking. You know, but my husband is so positive. You know, he's been thinking, you know, well, just think positive. Your tubes are open. So my doctor has scheduled what well, we are going to schedule an HSG test done. I mean, to be done again. But first, um, we have decided to go natural with some herbal remedies because I, I did some research and I read that a lot of women have opened up their block tubes by using this Chinese herbal tea and serapeptase. And uh, I'm going to show you the pictures of that, of what I used. My teas just came in. Um, one is Yang Zhang Kao, if you guys can see that. And this one is Ye Mu Kao. These teas are supposed to help um, open up my fallopian tubes naturally. Also with the serapeptase. Doctor's best serapeptase, high potency. That's supposed to be good for for removal of the scar tissue as well. Um, I don't know if my tubes are open right now, but I have been drinking my tea faithfully and taking my serapeptase. So I will keep you guys updated on that because when I have my, because you know, remember my doctor said my tubes appear to be closed, but and on, I do remember only one being open, but. Next week, when I have the HSG test done, you guys will know the results on that. So we're just going to pray that they're open. And um, you guys know what? I am so grateful to have such um, an understanding um, family, like my in-laws. You know, I've been told so many stories about Nigerian families, you know, about if their wife don't conceive and how mean they are. And they pressure the husband to either find another wife if um, he hasn't conceived, if, if no, we haven't conceived, but my, my in-laws are very, very supportive and, and they pray for me and they just make me feel so loved, you know? I am so blessed and I just want to thank them so much for being so supportive. But, um, and also my husband too, you know, he's, he's always, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't really pressure me as much. He's not really worried as much as I am because it's just that sometimes, you know, when I was, I had my children very, very young. I have a 27 year old, 25 and 22 and God knows I am grateful and I am glad that I had my children. But there were times when, you know, when you're younger, you get pregnant and it's like, damn, I'm pregnant, you know. Then you talk to your husband or your mate and you're like, damn, we're pregnant. What are we going to do? Because a lot of times the pregnancies are unplanned. But this time I'm like happily married and I, I have a husband and we're actually planning to have this child. And it just hasn't happened. And I just, you know, would love to to share these moments with a man that I'm, I know I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Um. But at any rate, I just, my heart goes out to all the women that has not shared any of those moments. You know, at first I didn't understand and I would look at videos and I didn't understand why is it, why are they so upset or why they, 
why are they trying or what what is it you know but y'all it's just that now that i am going through the whole thing and having to have all these procedures done and trying to understand why i haven't conceived now i i completely understand you know what those women are going through and my heart goes out to you guys and i know that one day you know god is going to bless you all with a child um very very soon so just you know stay positive um but I always forget to do this, you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me about my procedure. I try to record the steps along the way so you all can see, you know, what, what the process of going through the whole fibroid removal. Um, of course, I couldn't record the actual procedure, but I just wanted to take you all, take you all along. If you have any questions, like feel free to ask me and don't forget to like and subscribe. I always forget to say that y'all know I'll be watching other videos and that's what they be saying. <laughs> so, um, my heart goes out to you guys and just stay positive. Okay. And thanks for watching.